one of my other red chestnut, uh, red uh, oaks. And it's not turned as much. I must go around and show you all. Oh, you, no, you're bold. Okay, I better open the gates or there's gonna be more of them than that. Lamb. Quite the stampede. So they're happily eating. I'm going to bring you up here and show you. That was oak tree number one. Here's lots of staghorn. And then, uh, see, we have a copper beech. That's a crab apple I planted. Here's oak tree number two. And you can see it's beginning to turn. And then I'll bring you to three and four. This apple tree is a self-sown, we think golden delicious, because uh, it grew from an apple, apple core that was thrown right there in the bushes. But it's absolutely de delicious, not ripening yet. It's got a good, really good crop of apples this year. Some years it has hardly any, and then other years it's very prolific. And this looks like a very prolific year, which is fantastic. So walking over here, <clears throat> this is underneath this big horse chestnut. Here is uh, oak tree number three, just getting some lovely morning light. So that's oak tree, red oak tree number three, and it's only just beginning to turn. You can see there, otherwise it's not. It's in a very sheltered position, surrounded by cherries, horse chestnut, ash, rowan, cherries, other oaks, sweet chestnuts, all kinds of things. Anyway, down here is oak tree, red oak tree number five, in a more exposed location. You can see, and it's not even started turning yet at all. It hasn't even, it is still very, very green. So though you can see why I'm concerned about oak tree number five. So this is oak tree number four. 
See, down the road, when these two oak trees, this one here and that one over there, grow mature, they'll be on either side of the driveway when they get to their height. Look, you can see the holly is beginning to turn. There's some holly berries. Lots of them are still very green. Anyway, that's why I'm concerned about oak tree number five, who I'll bring to you now. These are rowans. This was given to me as a peach tree, but I think it's a crab apple. And it was gonna go into the vine house and be sheltered. It's got some sort of disease that curls its end leaves up. They're all curly whirly. But it's not a peach tree because when it bore fruit, it was more like a crab apple. See, there's a crab apple there. It's not feeling very well. A lot of the crab apples this year, see this crab apple isn't feeling very well either. It's bizarre. Some years they have really good years and other years they don't. That rowan though is feeling great. It has a good crop of berries on it. So last night was the first really, really cold night and we have ant hills all over the place or ant colonies and this is the first time they've been dug into so this is probably a hedgehog has dug in to feed on ants you can see it did it there there if we come over here it did it here this is another ant hill here you can always tell the soil under it is very sandy because of the granules of the ants. Oh, and there's an ant itself going, oh, it's frozen, stop moving. Anyway, oh, here's another one. Here's another ant hill and it started digging in here as well. You can see it's all this very sandy light soil from the excavation of the ants. And that's because it was cold last night. So the slugs and snails didn't come out and play. So the hedgehogs, who I guess have not hibernated yet, were hungry. So they had ants for their meals. Look, red clover still blooming. <laughs> Java with his favorite toy an empty pot. We've just been planting, transplanting. This was a gift I was given last year and I was really bold. I didn't plant it. Hopefully it's doing okay. I'm going to trim back some bits, but this was a gift and it's a tree climbing hydrangea. So it'll come up here. There's a rose, foxglove, things like that. Toad flax. I love toad flax. Toad flax is so beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to trim this back. So underneath this horse chestnut, we've always had cyclamen. They're not doing very well this year. So I've planted all these new ones under here. But they almost disappear. <laughs> There's so much space. Look at that. These are all the winter um, hardy cyclamen. They're not the uh, ones you buy in the supermarket. So, but they almost disappear. It's such a big space. But hopefully over time, this will have loads more cyclamen in it. And they'll self-seed. And I've dug up a lot of ivy. That's a lot of ivy that was hanging out there. Anyway, I did. I ran out of the uh, well compost wood chip mulch. I have to do that one and that one. Otherwise, these were the ones that have been here forever. But they're very small. I think it's because it's so dry. Hopefully next year they'll be better. And hopefully these will encourage more so it'd be lovely to have a swathe of them under there. You can see my little piles of wood chip mulch. A 
sun's going over the yard arm. <laughs> so, it's din din times for the flock of yos. Isn't that right, girls? They're trying to get out. Now, there we go. And munch they do. It's so warm, I've had to take my jacket off hanging on the gate down below. Mustard's keeping an eye on it. Here's Crystal. How are you, girl? Yes. Being crowded out by another year. Look at that. Poor Crystal. Can I get past you? Thank you. And you can see the alfalfa. So they've got a mixture of rolled barley, alfalfa, sugar beet, and some sheep nuts. Hey girls. I have a few apples. Let's see if I can get them over the fence to you. There we go. Yum, 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 yum. Anyway, I came over. This is the fifth red oak tree. It's turned Maybe because it's got a higher vantage point on the hill that it's turned. But I spoke to a nursery man the other day and he said uh, it should be okay. Even though I'm worried about it turning so early compared to the other ones. But it could just be the site it's exposed on. I mean, those are coming up fine. Yeah, those are all alive the buds for next year but it didn't put any growth on really to speak of but uh, maybe that's next year maybe it was just getting its roots down into the juicy soil anyway I think the horses are doing okay now back to herd the yos back into their um, into the shed I'm sure they've had their meal. Look at that tail. That was one of the most amazing tails I know of. Isn't that right, Java? You have such a floof of a tail. He carries it with such pride. Java? He says, no, I'm leading the way. We're going to put the ewes away. Back into their house for the night. Isn't that right, Maya? Yeah. evening sun it's after six could even be 6 30. so the evenings certainly are drawing in the sun setting earlier and earlier they're still in full flow well, actually they're probably licking the last bits off. Oh, sorry, you want to come in. So I'm hoping by the time they get through these two bales of hay, 
their condition will have returned. I'm also gonna be selling a whole bunch of them. Destocking a little bit as there's a lot of sheep on the farm now. So some of the older girls are gonna go and some of the younger ones. Oh, Inca. Whoops. Java got kicked in the face. But that's okay. Oh, yes, it's surprising. Oh, yes, I know. I know. It's okay, Java. How are you girls doing? I gotta treat your foot, Crystal. Looks like you're slightly lame. scratching on her head. Oh, I've been putting cream on her face because she's had a bit of a scratch there. So she's been getting cream around her ears and on her nose. Does it feel good? So she's actually getting really good at standing there while I give her cream. She's standing there. And she likes having cream put on her. She says, oh, it relieves the itchiness. Then she suddenly says, I've had enough. Here's another sheep that I've been putting cream on her head. Whoops. Can I put a little bit more on your head? Just one more go. Hmm? There. There. Are you? <laughs> Crystal's got racing stripes on her face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <whistles> Bedtime. Come on. No, don't take my cream. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your father. Good girl. Nighty night, ladies. Nighty night, Crystal. Yeah. You've had a lovely day of creams on your face.
She's so good. She just stands there and gets her cream on. Unlike some people. Other yes, you don't need cream. You're fine. You just like a head scratch. Okay. Job done. Put the cream away for tomorrow. It's this. This is what I use. It's a wonderful uh, natural remedy. It's got a mixture of... Uh, aloe vera, tea tree oil, lavender oil, comfrey oil. See? Lovely. Good stuff.